Hello and welcome to this What's New webinar. My name is Malta Haring and today I will show you the changes and improvements which we've done to version 22. In this new release, we have done some bigger changes and we actually performed the complete product relaunch, introducing the new performer suite. This, I'm very glad that all of you joined this webinar today because we have some great news for you. Before the, starting with the presentation, I would like to use the chance to thank all of the, our customers for their contribution to this update. Again, many ideas and feature requests were submitted, helping us to improve our software solution release by release. You've already received an email so far with a shipment of 20.2. And what's, I guess, most important of all is that you also received a new license file for the Performer Suite. So please make sure while installing the new version that you will use the new license file which we sent to you. You can also find a step-by-step -step instruction in our user manual. Here you have described all the steps that you need to take care of. Make sure that you create a database backup before installing the new version to be on the safe side. Our user manual was also updated and got a complete rework, so everything is prepared for the Performer Suite. And I can recommend to visit this user manual because here we also described in detail which, which updates you can expect from this new version. So please visit this uh, What's New in version 22 page. And here you can see in detail what has changed in the case where Doki Performer was changed to Performer Suite. Okay, so let me tell you about the idea behind the relaunch of the product. In Germany, we have this term called the Eierlegende Wollmilchsau, which describes the mystical creature, which is often used to describe things that are trying to perfectly solve all kinds of problems at once, the so-called all-in-one solution or an all-rounder. And the Doki Performer itself was internally also called Eierlegende Wollmilchsau because over the last 12 years, we have implemented all kinds of functionalities to address the variety of problems our customers were facing. Um, but this came with a certain price. With the increasing number of functionalities, the complexity of the application increased and the usability therefore decreased. Also, the product name was quite misleading. DocuPerformer is describing documentation functionality. And since we added analysis functionality, BV4 HANA migration functionalities, and even translating functionalities, DocuPerformer was simply not the right name anymore. Our intention behind this product relaunch was that all functional areas in the application are getting the same attention of our users, so they can clearly see the full potential for their use cases. And the solution was to split the Doki Performer into several products. So let's have a look at this. First of all, we have the Doki Performer now, which is combining all documentation and common functionalities. So Doki Performer stays, but it's simply only handling functionalities regarding documentation. All analysis functions and data lineage functionalities are now combined in the product system scout. The migration booster is taking care of all your BW for HANA migration tasks. And the translation steward in the end takes care of all your consistencies in the multilingual object descriptions. And all four products are in the end combined under the umbrella brand Performer Suite. Let's see what changes for you. Actually, not too much. So um, first of all, as I already said, you received a new license, which is basically covering the same license as you had before. We introduced a new application icon. So if you were searching after the update for your DocuPerformer icon on the desktop, you will now have to search for the new Performer Suite icon. We introduced a new launcher to the product. So whenever you start the application, you will receive this window where you can log in as usual, but then you get to the point where you can start the product which you would like to start with. So here you will have a list of DocuPerformer, System Scout, Migration Booster, Translation Steward, but you will also have the possibility to go straight to the administration area. And furthermore, of course, the application itself changed in its structure. Let me show you how this looks like in a live demo. 
Here you can already see the new performance suite icon. Let me start this. You will have a new starting screen, which is quite nice. And then you will get into the logon area. Here you go. So as usual, you have this selection for the language which you would like to see the application in. And then you can type in your user and your password to log into the application. And now this is new to you. We integrated a launcher and here you will choose your starting point where you would like to start. If you want to start doing some documentation or commenting, you will go, of course, to the document performer. If you would like to analyze your SAP systems, use the system scout. If you have BW for HANA migration tasks to do, choose the migration booster. And if you have translation work to do, choose the translation steward. So let me uh, simply start the system scout for now. And you will see that the launcher leads you straight away to the analysis function. Here we go. Um, so you can see that the application itself was structured as well in respect to the products. So on the very left tab, you have all the documentation functionalities in DocuPerformer. You have the system scout functionalities with all the analysis reports that you know. You have the migration booster with the migration projects and the translations to it. And what's also quite nice is that all administration settings are now combined under administration. So here you will find settings regarding users and roles. You will find the subsynchronization, all the settings regarding setting variants, but also all template and variants tasks. So here you will be able to create your documentation templates, your commenting templates. What's also important here, you will first of all see now all the connection data which you can maintain to your HANA systems, to your BO systems or SAC system. And you can even maintain the subsystem description levels and the mapping of your HANA schemas and so on. So this is restructured and as you can see quite nice, it's easy to jump from product to product depending on, on what is licensed. Okay, let's jump back to the presentation and I will show you what additional features you can expect from this new release. First of all, we give you the option that the admin user can set a central documenting path. So, so far it has been possible for every Docker performer user to select his own path where he wants to store his documentation files. From this version on, the admin will be able to set a global path if he wants to prevent that all the documentations are landing in different directories. So this gives you a better control on where your documentation files are stored. Another additional feature which we implemented is a preview on your comment variant. So whenever you are now looking at a comment for a certain object, you will be able to see what the outcome of the export would be if you select a certain comment variant. So you have here on the top the possibility in a comment to select your variant, and then you will see which parts of the comments are actually exported. This was not possible so far. You always had to create the documentation first and validate in the end which comments were actually exported. Now you can do this straight in the UI. We are always working on our scenario improvements. Let's see what you can expect here. There were customers who created a feature request that they wanted to sort their objects depending on their technical name or description in your scenario. So and now you are able to do so. So whenever you choose to sort your objects in the scenario, you can do this via technical name or descriptions. We also have a better structure on the scenario folders. So now you will see additional information regarding your scenarios. For example, who it was created by, when it was created or ch last changed, and who ch last changed your documentation. You might also be familiar with the problem that certain entities were deleted from your SAP system, but they were still part of your scenario. And it was quite uncomfortable to delete these already in SAP deleted objects from your documentation. This can now be done by one click. Um, so if you from now on use this button here, all in SAP deleted objects will be removed from your documentation by one click. Then we did some Confluence improvements. For the first time ever, we are supporting Confluence Cloud. 
And the release before we already provided you the possibility to access uh, your Confluence server. So you were able to export your documentations to, to your Confluence pages. And now we are also supporting the same for Confluence Cloud. And even more practical, we integrated the complete Confluence export into the, our automation tool. So uh, from now on, it's not only possible to manually export your documentations to Confluence, but you can also schedule your regular exports in the automation tool. Okay, our document generation window also got a redesign. So you will see in my demo after the, afterwards that it has a more fancier look. It shows you more structured details about the export and the current status. And it's even, it is even possible to restart documentation generations in case they failed at a certain point. Let me show you a few of these features in a live demo. So first of all, I would like to show you that it's possible to set up the Confluence Cloud Connection. Therefore, you can simply go to the administration area, you go to settings, and here you will find the option to, to set your Cloud Connection for your Confluence Cloud. Here you have to give your Confluence URL, your space, which you would like to use for your documentation, and then you can define parent pages where the documentation should actually end up. Let me show you how this works. As an example, I'm now opening already created scenario in the scenario directory. Here I will go to the folder BW. Here, for example, I have a scenario for a key figure catalog. Let's open this for now. And what I would like to show you first of all is how this sorting, the automatic sorting of the entities work regard, um, in respect to their technical name. So you can here already see that the objects, the calculated key figures and uh, the restricted key figures are randomly added to the scenario. And by just one click now here on the top, I can sort all the objects by their technical name. And you will see that they are now yeah, clearly structured. For sure, you can simply change this setting if you like to, and you can even sort your objects based on their technical name or description for a certain chapter. So this here is the kind of a global setting for the complete scenario. And if you select the context menu on a certain chapter, you can even do this sorting simply like this. Let me at least show you how the document generation window works from now on. So if I try to create a documentation, you will now see that the new document generation window will open and it clearly shows you the kind of file which is being created. And as soon as the processing, the documentation itself is finished, you will get some detailed information. You can jump to the folder where the documentation was placed into, but you can also open the documentation as used to straight away from the document generation window. Okay, that's it regarding DocuPerformer. Let's jump back and let me show you what new analysis functions you can expect from this system scout. For the first time ever, we are allowing you to do where used analysis of ABAP objects, BW objects, and show their usage in HANA entities. In this example here, we have, for example, the usage of a composite provider, the indirect usage of a composite provider in an external calculation view, which was created by a query. What else is new? Also here in the data flow analysis, we focus the new development on the interaction between your SAP systems. So from now on, you are, for example, able to see calculation views from, from your HANA system in the data flow view of your BW data model. And as you're already used to, if you have the BO license, you will also see which BO objects are used on top of the query. So I think this picture shows quite nicely that we are once again combining all three systems, all three worlds, the HANA world, the BW world, and the BO world in just one analysis. A quite a huge feature is our new HANA code scan. So you, you might already know our ABAP scan, which is allowing you to search for ABAP strings in your ABAP coding in the BW system. 
And we are offering something similar now for your HANA system. So you will be able to search certain strings in your complete HANA coding of your HANA system. And it is now from now on possible to compare entities of your HANA system. So you will be able to show all entities of a certain type in system A, uh, the entities in system B, and you will see which entities exist in both systems. And from here, you can even do a comparison on the metadata to get an insight of what might be different between certain objects. Let me show you some of the features in a live demo one more time. Okay, let's open the Performer Suite again and let's connect to our HANA system. Huh? Yeah, here it comes. So let me quickly connect here with my HANA user. And let me show you how the new functionalities work. So Let's start with the HANA code scan, for example. Therefore, I go to the system scout and I go to the where used analysis. And here, for example, I can simply start the HANA code scan. And let me show you how the string scan works. So I prepared a string, a simple table name here, which I would like to see the usage for in the coding. I simply paste it. You can also do this with multiple strings. If you have multiple strings, you simply use the multi-line filter. And then I start the code scan. And as you will see, the result list shows me all entities which are somehow accessing this table in their coding. Here I have, for example, a calculation view, but I also have a stored procedure or a table function. If you would like to see the detail of how this table is addressed in the coding, then you can simply use the context menu and show the source code. And the application shows you highlighted the exact code line where this table is addressed, which I think is quite powerful and nice. Okay, let's jump back to our BW for HANA system, where I would like to show you how the interaction of the HANA and ABAP entities is displayed in the data flow view. Therefore, I simply use this composite provider here and I use the context menu again to display the data flow. And now you will see that the application isn't just simply showing me the data model uh, with all the respective BW objects under the composite provider, but I get also the HANA calculation view shown. As a last functionality, I would like to show you the where used analysis, which we are now providing. So if I go with the context menu on the SANA Composite Provider, I can start my where used analysis. And here you will find the new option to check the usage in HANA entities. Let me deselect the other ones. I can execute it. And the list provides me all HANA entities, which are somehow using this Composite Provider in a direct or indirect way. As already explained in this case, for example, the composite provider is indirectly used by this calculation view, which was created by the external view of a query. Okay, let me jump back to the presentation and let's see what is new in our migration tool, the Migration Booster. So for, you, for those of you who are familiar with the migration booster or with the migration module, as it was called so far, you know that it was used to migrate certain old data models of your old BW system into BW for HANA data models for your new BW for HANA system. And in this new release, it's now even more comfortable to collect your data model objects for the migration purpose. So you can use the data flow analysis, which I just showed you. You can select all the objects which you would like to transfer into the new object types and collect those for the migration booster and simply import them into your migration project. If you want to, you can set new namespaces and so on to get everything ready for your BW for HANA migration. What I think is even more valuable is our new query backup functionality. You all might know that there are sometimes endless discussions with your business counterpart if certain queries or reports should be considered during the BW for HANA migration or not. And business usually tends to 
to say, yeah, we need this report, maybe we need it in three years one more time. And IT always tries to save work during the migration and only wants to migrate what is necessary. With this backup functionality, you can actually postpone this question to the future. So simply use our migration booster to create a backup of your query. And if needed in future, when the old systems are already turned off, you can simply access these files to create a backup of this query. Let me quickly show you how this works. So for the backup creation, I simply open one of my migration projects. And here you will find from now on the backup query data functionality. You simply select your BW system from which you would like to back up your queries. And then you will get a list here of all the queries in your system. You search for them with a technical name. You drag and drop them into the right area. You define a path where you want to write this backup files to. Let's choose desktop for now. And then you start the export. Again, the document generation window opens and the queries are stored into files. And those of you who already know our query reporting tool, this can be used at a later point in time to restore your queries from these files. So I can simply select my backup file and I can select a target system with the target structure, for example, the HANA Composite Provider to restore my query. Okay, let's get to the last of the four new products, the translation stewards. Uh, here we did some minor improvements regarding the performance and usability, especially where we were working on a better process, how to, to get your dictionary entries into the workspace. Okay, this is all regarding our new features for each of the products which I just presented. And now I will finish with some appendix. Let's have a look on what we are currently working on. We are currently developing and improving the Confluence integration. As you saw, we already support the server and cloud version. There will be improvements coming in the next releases. We are furthermore developing and improving the SAP SAC integration. Uh, sub analytics cloud here you can expect to wear used analysis so you will for sure see which queries are used in certain sac stories via data models in future it will be possible to download and import scenarios this way we can also provide our customers with scenario templates which you can integrate and it will be possible to transfer comments from object to object Okay, if you saw any features today which you would like to test in future and you haven't already licensed, feel free to get a free trial. Contact us simply by email, phone, or by our new website. That's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed today's session and I hope to see you soon in our next webinars. Bye-bye.